We figured that out. Don't yeah. you think this is like when you <sighs> when you smoke DMT, and I've never smoked DMT, and I never would do any illegal psychedelic. But let's say that I yeah, had recent. Let's say that I'd recently done it at like I don't know Burning Man, where no one's doing drugs there anymore. But let's say that I'd done right. it there. But uh, <laughs> I and like <laughs> people are so confused <laughs> anymore. The point anymore. is, like, back in the old days, man, it was better. Uh, like so, making up that I had had that. I had a crazy experience, man, where. Uh, uh, I looked down after drinking this very strong mint tea, and I saw this, uh, I saw this fucking, uh, I, I don't know, it looked like a, it was a, it looked kind of like a cow or something, but coming out of its, it had this long neck with like a technological lantern hanging off of it, mm. and uh, I'm looking at that thing, and what's interesting about DMT is you look away, and you look back, that fucking thing's still there, man, it's just right there, I'm like, what the fuck? got sucked through this tube into this beautiful, beautiful domed structure. Oh man, it was so pretty. And it was just, it's spinning with potential. It's just pure potentiality. And I'm looking at this incredible thing. It's technology for sure. I mean, whatever this was, the, the way my brain was interpreting it is like, this is technology. Like I'm looking at some kind of super advanced simulator or some kind of machine that is like simulating realities and i'm looking at it, it's like my god it's just so much potential here but i thought to myself i'm gonna miss my friends if i have to hang out in this place because the interesting thing about dmt is that there's a sense of oh, i've heard other people report this a sense of incredible familiarity where you're yes. like i have been here in fact this is home yeah. and then you realize the feeling of coming home is actually this is that is, is not even close to the feeling of being at home here. And I'm looking around at this and thinking, yeah, but my friends, my friends, what about all my friends? I'm going to, in this space, I'm going to miss them. And that thing, it doesn't talk to you, but it's like, might as well be a voice. It's like, oh, oh, you can always go back there. And then I open my eyes and I'm back at Burning Man, hanging out with my friends. And that's when I realized, oh, fuck, I get reincarnation, man. I get it. This thing you're talking about, the simulator that mm -hmm. is going to happen, sometimes and so after having taken psychedelics, you think, no, 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 it's already fucking happened. And this thing that we're in right now, our lives, the idea of reincarnation is you die and then you become a goat or something crazy like that, a larva, a slug. But what if it's that you die, you pop into that DMT realm, and you get to jump back into your life at any frame of your life that you want to. You can, you can actually repopulate your life or reincarnate your life at any moment. So you die, you become the universal super intelligence, and then you gaze back into what happened. And usually it's like in Buddhism, they say the cause of suffering is attachment. That, that what, what you're attached to that life, this thing you just were, this fucking interdimensional temporal worm that burrowed through time with every action that you took. And you're but like, I don't want to die. Yeah. Well, you're just, you're, you're like, I want to go back. Right. I want to go back to this moment right now. And I was podcasting with my pals, doing a shrimp parade. And then boom, there you are. You're back, back in your life. So in any given moment, you could be reincarnating a million fucking times. You could just be like always coming back to any frame of your life that you want. And anyway, this is what came to me out there in the desert. And I was thinking, oh, I get it. It's not like you reincarnate into other life forms. You keep repeating your life, but it's not a circle. It's a spiral, hopefully, because each time you can improve a little bit more. You can improve a little bit more, make decisions that you normally wouldn't make, which is why like at any given moment, you know the big moments that come when you're around somebody and you're about to say some shitty fucking thing to them? You know, your enemy, your, whoever it may be. That moment where you're like about to do the fucking thing you always do. And you can feel it. Like you're, you, you feel this gravitational pull to the habituation. And in that moment, you're like, you don't say the shitty thing. In that moment, you discipline yourself. You control yourself. You don't do the thing you've always done, whatever it is. And in that moment, your life spirals up a little bit. And now you're existing in like a completely new, new like essentially a new universe. A higher plane. What? You, you hit a higher plane. Yes, exactly. It, I mean, that's kind of, in a way, it replicates what you talk about sometimes on your social media. I see on your Instagram, like taming the inner bitch. Yeah. Like the, you had a thing the other day. It was like, you know, I really did not want to do this today. You know, I yeah. got up, you know, after you did a show the night before or whatever. And you did it. And at the end of it, by doing that thing you didn't want to do. Yeah. Or not doing the thing you do want to do, yeah. conversely, 
you do move to a higher level. And you feel it, way better. You and, and that so that thing you that thing you 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 Instagrammed, um, which I think is a super cool thing that you do, because uh, I think it's like a lot of people need to like think, yeah, man, I could fucking anytime I want, I could just start jogging, and, and, but yeah, it's like and you could like really you could you just start doing it. You don't even have to be good at it. You don't have to do anything. Could just make sure make sure you do it. If you just do that, everything changes for the better. And that seems so easy. It seems so ridiculous. But you need to hear people say it, and you need to hear someone say it who actually does it. Yes. Now, that, you know, Rupert Sheldrake, I think you might. Yeah, I, I, I've had so, him on. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, so you great. know his idea of the runnel and the time-space, he calls it a runnel, basically. So that feeling when you're like, fuck, I'm not going to go running, you're not just feeling your own, like, you know, lack of ambition or laziness. You're literally feeling now again. God, I don't believe this. It's just like a thought experiment or whatever. But you're literally feeling the gravitational pull of infinite lifetimes, where in that moment you decided not to go running. You're actually feeling like the track that you've carved deep into the time space continuum by every time mm. that moment appears you keep making so when you actually do go i'm gonna go fucking running you're kind of climbing out of this trench that you've dug into time over countless incarnations and when you do that and you're out there running you're like in a new dimension now you're like yeah. what the fuck mm. this is the dimension where i decided to go running and then that and that's why everything starts changing a little bit when you make these decisions. Big life changing moves. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. are good for you. And for some people, going out jogging can be a life changing move. It doesn't yeah. have to be some spectacular thing. It could be as simple as like taking a yoga class, deciding you're going to take a yoga class twice a week or three times a week can change your life. Calling someone who you've said some shitty thing to because they're, they did something wrong. And, and being the bigger person, apologizing. Instead of holding that stupid grudge, right. calling them up and being like, hey, I'm sorry. I was fucking mad. I love you. You're great. Instead of like carrying on with this stupid, angry war. Carousel. Yeah, yeah. the carousel. Anytime you make decisions like that, things get fucking better so fast. And then like, I don't know if you've noticed that this, I've noticed like synchronicities start happening more. Like good luck starts happening more. Like interesting things start happening more. Yeah, I think you, we, we, res, we fight against ourselves sometimes accidentally. Like, I mean, I, when I was young, when I was young, I would have an interaction with someone and then I would always imagine what they were gonna say when we talked again. And then I would imagine me talking shit to them. Yes. And then I would imagine them getting upset at me and having a delusional perspective. I would like play out this yeah. weird play in my mind. I'm like, yeah. and then one when I was in my 20s, I started to realize how preposterous it was. It took me that long. And I realized, like, I'm wasting all this time. Um, and I didn't realize it was cra I didn't realize other people did it until I talked to my friend Brian once, and he was saying the same thing. I go, you have arguments with people that aren't there. He goes, all the fucking time. Yeah. All the fucking time. I have arguments yeah. in my head with people that weren't there. That's like sometimes you'll have a conversation with someone about something, and then you both immediately are, like, relieved and start laughing because yeah. you're both expecting the other person to be, like, super mad and come in like an asshole. Yes. But meanwhile, you both apologize, and then it just goes away, and then everybody feels way better. Way better. Way better. Yeah. Like, Conflict is stupid. What's not stupid is exercising out all the anxiety that your body possesses that it creates conflict in the first place. Whether it's exercising it through meditation or through taking a yoga class or doing something physical that just gives you uh, some relief of stress because right. you exert yourself. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Fucking going on a nice hike. You go on a nice hike, you get to see things and you feel better. Like you're walking, the blood starts pumping through your brain. You come up with great ideas when you hike. You know, it's like all these things are just little incremental steps that every one of us can take. And you do that and it changes everything. Then you be nicer, nicer to people, that changes everything too. Right. And it helps you to be nicer if you have control of your physical body. That's it. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the question that we were talking about earlier is like, what the fuck do we do about the lunatics out there? Well, what you do, man, you, I mean, if you can, you start with the fucking lunatic that you're sitting in right now. <laughs> That's what you do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Start with that lunatic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then, and then, and 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 that. I mean, that's that's exactly what Ramdas says: is uh, we work on ourselves so we can help the people next to us, and that's all you can do. Yeah. Because you can't do shit, man, to make another person. You're not really going to do much to the other people around you. They're going to do their own thing. They're going to decide. I mean, this is something I've been thinking. 
fucking Jesus. Because a lot of people talk about miracles and stuff, especially like in, in the camps I hang out at with. Like <laughs> Duncan says, I've been thinking about fucking Jesus. <laughs> you shouldn't say okay, that, man. but but he, no, I will freaking. That's a different freaking no, man. That's a different thing. Fucking <laughs> fucking Jesus. Yeah. I would totally do it. It's a different thing I that, bet you've already done it. If you do DMT, I bet that's part of the experience. Making love probably, to the Christ. You're having intercourse with the Christ. It would be an honor. Through all pores. <laughs> it would be an honor. You but, go together like this. Uh, you just merge. You just merge. You just merge. Yeah. You're on but, your knees again at the video store. This but, guy, it's always dirty with him. But, it can never be just psychedelic love. I, it's erotic psychedelic love about <laughs> yes. Jesus, Joe. You have to be on your knees choking on <laughs> Christ come. Why not? But I, I would definitely, you, can guarantee, you can guarantee that's going to be a, sim, a sex simulator for sure. Make oh, love to Christ. For sure. So that's gonna for happen. sure. But and what, the Virgin Mary. Yeah. She was hot. These people, they talk about miracles a lot. Denise. Guys, come on. I'm trying to talk about fucking miracles <laughs> sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. So, so. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this fake Denise gal we created. <laughs> Denise. No, these people, they talk about miracles a bunch. And, and like, you know, having seen some of these fucking gurus do crazy shit. Yeah. But they always say it doesn't matter. Like, ultimately, these are just like fireworks, kind of. It's just like tricks. It's a firework. It doesn't, because like, the thing is, like, you could sit in front of someone and like levitate bottles in front of them. Like, levitate a bunch of bottles, right. teleport across the room, come back, and then tell the person, you know, you're going to be a lot happier if you go jogging. Like, someone could do that to me, and tomorrow I'm going to wake up, and I'm like, yeah, he levitated bottles. He teleported across the room, and he told me I should go jogging. Like, uh, I'll probably go tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not going to go fucking jogging. I don't care that he teleported. I don't care that he levitated. So, the, 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 you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. The, none of the, none of the, the point is, like, if, so if a person who can levitate bottles probably isn't going to make you go jogging, then certainly you're not going to be able to talk to a person and be like, hey, you know, you're going to feel better if you do this. Right. You All you can really do is look at yourself and be like, you know what? I'm going to go fucking jogging. This is a really good point. What is, what's your take on this in terms of like the miracles in the Bible, like some of the weirder ones, like walking on water? Like what do you, how, do you, what do you think that's about? What do you think like the – even though the interpretation of those is kind of suspect, right? Like, what not the walking on water is a weird one? Because I think it has to do with translation, and I think that it, it could be interpreted in other languages as walking by the water, like walking near the water. It could be thought of as levitating and walking on water. It's all in the preposition, man. Yeah, it's so hard when you're going from ancient Hebrew and yeah, man. Aramaic and all sure. this different shit. But do you sure. think that this, what you're saying is like that someone would do tricks to get you to listen to them? Like you levitate things or walk on water yeah. or turn water into wine. Or like, read minds. Or Moses splits the sea. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like, you know, I used to have a bit about that where it was like, um, like there'd be like a hundred people standing behind him going, how long can he hold that? Like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, why do he split the oak? We have to walk across that? Yeah. Dude, that's going to take days. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how's he doing that? Magic? Tell that silly motherfucker to use his magic and make us a boat. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm not walking. Yeah. It's a mile high of sea on yeah. one side, a mile me. high of the other. And you're just walking through the middle, just fucking yeah. dead fish flopping around in the middle. Walls of water on either side. Yeah. Very humid. Yeah. Well, fuck that. Well, I mean, you're do that's all, yeah. you know, that's literal interpretations of something yeah. that's like way deeper than that. Probably that has a lot of deeper meanings. It's probably yeah. a, you know, it's a right. it's a myth. They're using these like encoded stories to try to get across something that's a lot bigger and that's um isn't about really walking on water maybe. No, or, but I think that these showing that the people that had all this knowledge also had magic tricks is very telling. Like the people that everybody would follow, they were they were able to do things. Yeah. Right. Like, how about the guy who uh, called upon uh, a she bear to kill these kids that were mocking him for being bald? That's a story. In That's the Bible. in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a man. <laughs> I forget his name. Bear? See if you can find that story. <laughs> he called uh, upon a she bear, and God <laughs> brought down a she bear to smite these children <laughs> that were making fun of his balding. <laughs> It's funny. Yeah. She bear I and get it. she ass. They're, yeah, well, I think it was a, a female bear. They would, they would, they would call it a she bear back then. Mm -hmm. You know, today they would. I guess they would call it a sow, a sow bear. 
but that this bear killed the kids because they were making fun of him from being from being bald. Yeah. Like what? Like you know, there again, you have to listen yeah. to this guy. He's got magic. He's able to conjure up sure. beasts from the forest to kill mocking children. Yeah. They walk on water. They turn water into wine. Here, why did God kill 42 lads merely for saying Elisha was bald? <laughs> 42 lads. That yeah. makes it worse somehow. <laughs> lads is was such a friendly two. word. Well, let's yeah. read the verse. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and he was going up by the way. Young lads came out from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head! Go up, you bald head! When he looked behind him and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. It doesn't say what he the said. The Lord's in all caps, too, by the way. Like yeah, it's a fucking be. Twitter account. Then two, f <laughs> then two female... Yeah, Lord! <laughs> Lord! Then two female bears came out of the woods and tore up 42 lads of their number. I thought it was two. I didn't 42, know it was 42. Man. That's crazy. 42. It's a lot of lad. Uh, I didn't know it was two bears either. Lad, I thought it was just one she bear. Wait, what is it? So this is like actually exploring this. Why would God it, allow it, two bears to kill forty-two young lads? It is, and it's written by a guy named Matt Slick. <laughs> yes. Oh so, God, I don't know. He's probably doing porn right now. And re look what it says. Let's take a look, bitch. You ain't taking a look Let's at nothing. Look. You're just guessing. Alicia was traveling from Jericho to Bethel when a group of young men verbally accosted him. Uh, 42 is a large number of people, and they were probably an organized group who had gone out to challenge Eli Elisha. Their mockery implied a, malicia to, a malicious intent, especially when the culture of the time insisted on showing respect to their elders. Furthermore, the statement, go up, you bald head, has cultural significance. First of all, go up, in parenthesis, is probably a reference to Elisha's predecessor, Elijah, ascending to heaven. In other words... They are stating that when Elisha gone, oh, they want Elisha gone. It's, oh, this is just so ridiculously. Yeah. And since Elijah had gone on to the next world, the implication is they wanted Elisha dead. Also, the epithet bald head was one of contempt in the East, in quotes, uh, applied to a person who, uh, a person even with a bushy head of hair. Lepers had to shave their heads. So such a statement could easily have been deliberate and malicious insult, something dangerous and a mo yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, this is such a weird interpretation of what it is. Either way, you sent bears to kill people for mocking your fucking head. Because it, so you're saying it's okay if they were being disrespectful that God would just call some bears. Yeah, like, this is the weirdest sort of a justification yeah. for attack weird. by by wild beasts. The, you, the creator yeah. of the universe is using a wild beast to attack because someone hurt with words. Yeah, have, have you read the book of Job? Not since I was like it's a it's eight. a whopper, man. So it's the story of this guy Job, who's like prosperous. He's in love. He's married. He has three children and lots of animals and land. And everything's going great. And so up in heaven or in wherever they are, God and the devil are having a conversation. And God is saying, "Look at how great I am. How everyone loves me. And you know, look at Job. He loves me. He worships all the time and all that." And the devil says, "Well, of course he does, because his life's so good." Take away his uh, sheep and see what he says. And God's like, all right. So he kills all Job's sheep. And Job goes to church and worships and no problem. And then the devil's like, yeah, but if you took away the, the cows and the, the land there, then you'd see. So God goes <laughs> and takes away the cows and the land. And it goes on and on until Job is totally destitute. All of his family is dead. He's sitting on an ash heap with boils all over his body. That's how far God was willing to go to prove a point to the devil. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but remember the part that he And he continued to love God. No, but the 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 the, <laughs> the uh there That's a crazy story. But the, the part well, where so, sorry, let me just oh, finish. Sorry, sorry. So, so then what so then God wins the bet where he's oh. tortured this dude and he gives back twice as much as everything uh, to Job to reward him. So now he has 400 sheep and da, da 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 and six children. And it's like, so it didn't matter who those children were that you killed and the wife. You just give him another wife and more children, you're better. Maybe he had a little time machine, spun it all back. I mean, he did create yeah. the universe. He could do whatever the fuck do whatever he wants. Do whatever the fuck he wants. But that is kind of like the part in Job that's cool. I mean, again, literally, yeah, it's fucking it's ridiculous, but it's not like... It's these, not supposed to be these literal. are stories that are meant to like encompass the human predicament and like one of the cool things in there isn't there this great line where job is like questioning 
why he would Job is questioning him too or something. He said something oh, like Oh yeah, yeah, he, they get into an argument. But, but his yeah. response is something like I created Yeah, where were you when I created the heavens and the well, earth? Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 that and and this is again, man, the the fucking tone in this de- this tribal desert religion is really harsh and patriarchal. But the message behind it is pretty similar to the Bhagavad Gita, which is this is a fucking battlefield where Krishna turns into the universal form. This is the quote, Opp- Oppenheimer's quote. Yeah. Uh, Behold, I have become death. I am become death. The destroyer, the destroyer of, of worlds. worlds. And so it's a similar thing. Both of these are saying, listen, tiny little human thing, all caught up in your life, so fixated on everything about you. You exist within the infinite span of time. A big bang that go, we, something like we were saying, longer than 13.7 billion years. You tiny, tiny little thing. You exist in something so infinitely gigantic and beautiful. What do you think you control? What do you think you really control? You don't control shit. You don't control anything. So that's what they, they, really it's more of like when, when we experience inevitable catastrophe in our lives and we're looking around and like, what the fuck, man? What, what the fuck's wrong with the universe? It's like nothing's wrong with the universe. Nothing's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with anything. In fact, everything's perfect. Just surrender to it. Even if you're sitting in the goddamn ash pile covered in boils, if you just let go and surrender and drop the bitterness, then you can, if nothing else, not suffer under the terrible weight of the resistance or feeling like a victim. That's to me what I get out of Job, you know, from the non-literal level. The literal level, right. it's like God's hanging out with Satan. Right. So they play poker and shit. What does that mean? <laughs> Like he just drops by, like Satan sometimes just pops by wherever God lives. And they That's make ri- bets. They make bets. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And but people uh, suffer for God's bet. Kind of yeah. like Fear Factor when you think about it. No, you got paid for Fear Factor. 